So, Fergus, thanks very much for giving us insights at their Henley Business and Technology Group. One of the key messages about moving for online online business for travel, could you give us insights on what you spoke about, please? Hmm. I think the, the key thing, my background is airlines, so an airlines basically online is the only way to go. I, think I was in British Airways during the, the 9-11 uh, incident and basically moving online can help to save the airline. I think the hospitality world at the moment is probably three quarters of a generation behind airlines. Airlines are slightly behind retail, but all of these are basically moving towards online, giving customers choice. It's partly to do with um, price visibility. Uh, you can't hide behind a price anymore. If I'm in America, I can see the UK prices, etc. Um, the online experience basically gives people that a choice to go through a journey at their own speed. Um, and I think once they, once they realize the, the brand proposition online is quite simple, it, it allows us to compete against much, much bigger brands. So I think online for travel is, kind of, is a natural step. I think a lot of the big brands, the big hotel chains at the moment are kind of li relying on their loyalty schemes and kind of hiding behind their traditional way of doing things. Um, for smaller brands like myself, um, we, can, we can in fact achieve very good cost of sale by going online. So it's not just about taking costs out of the journey, it's also about improving experience at exactly the same time. So it kind of ticks all the boxes, it just seems so logical now. Okay, so the technology in the Yotel hotel experience itself, could you give us some insights into what you've tried, what works, what doesn't work? Mm. Absolutely. Uh, Yotel opened a huge hotel, um, 713 rooms, 42nd and 10th Street, um, Manhattan, about five years ago. And we're the first hotel in Manhattan to use self-service kiosks for check-in. Um, that's That kind of set the trend. A lot of other hotels have copied since. The model there was very much letting people like, arrive at the hotel, self-check-in, go straight to room. And we basically borrowed from the airline model. It's a similar kiosk of our own design. That then led to a few other things like uh, a Yobot. We have a robotic... Uh, bag check guy in New York. Uh, uh -huh. It's a repurposed um, robot from a car production line, so it's a huge thing. <laughs> right. And it, it basically takes luggage for free, uh, and I four, I, I a 35 kilogram bag, and plonks it into a little cubicle, and then re retrieves it again when you put your, your key card back in. The idea there is basically kind of not to take people out of the process, just add a bit of fun, but also functionality, fun and functionality. Um, future hotels probably won't be able to afford a Yo bot, but will have some kind of Yo machine or Yo entity. Um, what else are we doing? Uh, we have uh, kind of self-service um, meeting rooms, so people can kind of book their own little meeting space in the hotels. Um, we're dabbling with things like drones, would you believe? In Singapore, a new hotel has got a huge 10th floor open air terrace and drone technology there, a little bit more advanced in the UK. So we may be doing <laughs> cocktail delivery to little tables if, if, if they can actually lift the thing. Um, we're also looking at more smaller your body things to effectively take linen to a room or if you're a VIP customer, we still have VIP customers, we'll take your luggage and you kind of follow it. It'll take you to your room and just follow it along. It'll go up to the lifts even, press buttons or call buttons and, and take you to the room. And it's not about you know, dabbling with technology, it's more about, um, well, if we can have take people out of that process, we can add people back into processes where they do add value, which is service recovery, helping people, concierge services. Um, and the rest really is online, so we have a good app, which is a concierge app, so it talks about what to do in the neighbourhood, and it gives uh, crew tips, as we call them, so restaurants, bars, clubs, what to do, all within about a half an hour easy walk of each hotel. Um, it gives you guidance on where to go and kind of links you to Uber, etc. So that's kind of a nice little app. It also kind of lets you do um, mobile check-in, uh, mobile key check-in. So for San Francisco, Boston, Singapore, which open next year, your mobile is your key card. So literally you mm. could uh, discover us online, book in online, uh, pay online, etc. Go straight to room, again, as airlines have done already. So straight to gate, straight to bed for the hotel model. 
Um, but all the way through, technology assists the customer journey. So we still have a TLC, Tender Loving Care journey. So if you want to meet a, a real person, eye to eye contact as you check in, that's there 24 by 7. So human beings are always on site. Um, if you want to talk to a, a real human being for a concierge, they'll still recommend which restaurant to go to and help you book a, book a show or something. Um, if you want to say goodbye to a human being as you leave, you can check out. And if you use the kiosk, you can still meet a person and check out. If you want your bags to be carried to your room, you can pay 15 bucks for the privilege of doing that. And a human being will do that. Uh, unionize and expect a tip as well, but Yoba doesn't do either. No, no, no right. union, no <laughs> tips, which will be quite useful going forward. Um, the rest related to technology where it's appropriate. I mean, we, are, we ask our customers, would you like things like app control lighting, app control window blinds, app controlled... Uh, whatever, air conditioning, and they say, no, I'd rather have power shower, soft bed, big TV, super fast Wi-Fi, so we're, we're biasing our technology to whatever the customer's really the, is focused on. So it's customer choice rather than just technology for the sake of it. Absolutely, and some of our competitors are definitely going down the line of app-controlled everything, and we've tried yeah. them, and yeah. you know, day two, the window blinds stick halfway down. And there's no one in the hotel who knows what to do because the engineer is a thousand miles away in San Francisco or something. So we're veering away from that, not because it's you know, maintenance issues, more because our customers are just not asking for that. And our customers are millennials, a millennial plus, so even slightly older, and they're much more into, into uh, messaging apps and taking pictures and social media and great Wi-Fi. They bring their own media. There's no need for hotels to provide uh, movies on demand anymore. They'll just plug in their own Netflix or um, video on demand yeah. services. Yeah, great. So you, we've now got the big brands and the big chains, which have got lots of brands in that under them, and at the other end we've got Airbnb, where everybody can have become a hotel. What, what, what's the positioning for the small brands and the niche brands like Yota? Mm. Um, there's still a big piece which is to do with experience. So I think they, some of the bigger hotel chains are definitely seeing an impact from Airbnb coming in and eating their lunch. Um, if it's a small hotel chain as a boutique style, um, affordable luxury as your hotel uh, positions itself, we can still differentiate through experience on property. So. Before the journey, it's online, it's an app, etc. On property, there are human beings who help you if necessary. Um, and the rooms are just so kind of funky and interesting. It's a space you want to come back to in the evening. Your hotel model is slightly smaller rooms. So your real estate is slightly less. And the available daily rate, 80 hours, we call it, slightly less than a traditional competitor might be a few blocks away. Um, but most of our customers tend to uh, they sleep in their room, they chill in their room, and then they go out into town. Um, in terms of differentiation, uh, we do a lot of digital marketing online, so we pull all the levers from Meta Search to Programmatic to um, all the big search engine pieces, affiliate marketing, and that way we can actually look for long tail brand terms. We're not competing with cool hotel in Manhattan, we could never afford that, those phrases. We go for more free Wi-Fi down to Manhattan near meatpacking, that kind of thing, and the prices are better. Uh, Meta Search, we list very well on the Trivargos and the Sky Scanners. And uh, we, we do a lot of um, kind of photogenic work. So our, our 42nd and 10th Manhattan Hotel is uh, 27 floors, great views of the Hudson, downtown um, New York. And we get people to take their own pictures. We do a lot of user-generated content, so it's Instagramming, it's Snapchatting, it's whatever they want to do from the hotel. And we reward them with free cocktails. Um, when people check in, uh, they get the opportunity to basically um, share with their friends. If they do, then they can also get free cocktails, free breakfast. Basically. So we reward people for social sharing. Um, and people remember us. Um, it, it's, a lot of it is to do with the people as well. There are, there are very friendly staff on site, and they will give you advice and say hi if, you, if they meet you in the lift. So um, we, we actually like Airbnb. I love their site, and great, great usability on their site. We also tune our site continuously. We use them as a very top-end multivariate testing tools. So there are two or three tests running every week to tweak and change things. And the pieces that make most interest and differentiate the customer will we'll bed in, will we'll bake in, and then keep testing, keep testing. Mm. Great. Thanks so much for your insights, folks. Pleasure.